Hello everybody, it's Jen. I'm back with another design team project for Not Too Shabby. This is the card I'm going to be making today. It is using the Penguin Palace stamp set called Rabbit Cafe. I am loving Penguin Palace stamps and just couldn't wait to share another card using one of their stamp sets. So we're going to jump into the coloring. There's quite a bit of coloring for this card. I did leave all of it in. I know a lot of you love to see uh, how you can possibly color the images and get some inspiration for stamps that you may purchase. Starting off with the warm gray tones here for this first little bunny, I want her to look gray in color. So I'm using W5, W3, and W1. Just started mapping out my shadows with the lightest, then went in with the darkest. Then W3 is the midtone and then blending that out with the lightest. I did go back over this image a second time. I felt like I brought back that darkest color a little bit too much, so wanted to just give her a little bit more definition, so did the second time around. For the next little bunny, once I get her colored up here, I'm going to have him look white, so I'm going to use some lighter warm grays here. I'm doing all accents for the bunnies inside their little ears and their cheeks with the RV11. So for our white bunny, I'm using W3, W1, W00, and then my colorless blender. I want to make sure I'm leaving lots of white space here so he doesn't look gray like our other bunny. I'm just adding a little bit of the W3 to the darkest areas, so under his hat and under his apron and where his arms would naturally cast a shadow. So I'm going to blend that out with the W1, then the W0, and then I'm going to bring in the blender pen, first bringing in that RV11, and I did add a little bit of the pink to their noses as well, and then coming in with the blender pen to push back that color so he looks white. For our little girl, I'm going to do some very fair skin coloring for her today. So I'm just using E11 as my darkest, E00 as my midtone, and then E000 as the lightest color. She was super simple to color up for her skin because there wasn't very much showing. And I'm going to add some RV11 to her cheeks as well just to give some consistency to the three of them. So for the hair, I'm using my favorite blonde color combination here. I'm using the Y23 to give me that yellow kind of under color. And then I'm moving right in with the E33, which is my darkest. I want to leave a little bit of highlight at the top of the front, front section of her hair. So I'm leaving a little bit of white space. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the E53 and flick that color out a little bit more just to bring uh, that white space closed a little bit more. And then finally I'm going to go back over with the Y23 just to give that yellowish blonde color. So this is kind of like a dirty blonde color in my opinion, but I really love using it. So I thought I would kind of go with the Starbucks theme. Now if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I don't drink coffee. Uh, but I do like a chai tea latte at Starbucks. So we thought we'd go with this green tones, just something a little bit different. So I'm using a four color blend, but not on all of the areas. My darkest is going to be the G28, and then my darkest midtone, the G46. My lightest midtone is the G43. And then the uh, lightest color I'm using is the G40. Now with his little hat here, I felt like it just didn't look right with that highlight. So I went in and I went back over with the darker midtone and just used a three color blend for that. Now I'm going to add lots of green throughout the entire card. Again, just to create some consistency. So here I'm doing the roof of the little rabbit cafe. And here I am going to use all four of the colors, just leaving only a slight bit of the area for the G40. Uh, but I thought that that gave it a nice contrast between the darkest color at the top and then fading to lighter at the bottom. 
I'm going to go ahead and color the banner with the greens as well, as well as our little plant here. I'm going to use every image you see here except the little girl. In the end, I just didn't feel like she fit on the card, and so I kept her, and I'll make another card with her at some point, but I left the coloring in for her just in case you wanted to see how you might be able to color up. Um, sh she's just so cute. I love her with her little to-go cup there. So I colored in the little medallions on the coffee cups. Now I'm going ahead with the umbrella for our little outdoor seating area and coloring that very similar to the roof of the cafe. I was trying to figure out what color I wanted to use in addition to the greens and I kind of like greens and pinks so I went with a bright pink color. I'm using RV25 as my darkest, RV23 and then RV11 as the lightest. I used the pink mostly for her outfit and then I colored the top of the cupcake in the pink as well and the little candy. Love this three color combination. I feel like with three colors you can get some nice contrast and then uh, a nice highlight with the RV11. I am going to color the little heart on top of the lantern pink as well. I'm also going to color the straw for the little bunny's drink with the pink as well. And that area is so tiny, I just used one color. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to add in all of the areas that I want to look white. And I'm using my C markers for that. My darkest here will be the C7. And then we'll go down from darkest to lightest to C5, C3, C1, and my colorless blender. Now I'm bringing in the C7 and the C5 because I'm going to color some of the areas a black color. So for the white, I'm actually only using the C3, the C1, and the 0. I don't think I added in any of the C5 uh, for the white areas. I might have for the awning here on the little... Uh, Rabbit Cafe, but I think I stuck mostly just to a two color blend. So the areas that I'm going to do darker are the little light post, some of the areas on the cafe, including the door and the outline of the sign at the top of the little cafe. I'm going to do the chair and the bottom of the little table with the umbrella in the black color as well. I couldn't decide on another color that I wanted to use. I wanted to keep it fairly neutral with the whites and the grays with the green and then the pop of color with the pink. So I decided on black. Now for the chair you're going to see here I'm going to start working on that in a minute and I actually colored it wrong. So this will be a case of don't do what I do if you have this stamp set. But I started coloring it and then I realized that the little rails at the back of the chair are not supposed to be thick. So they're just the straight lines and I for some reason thought I was supposed to color a couple of them in. So you can see me here, I stop and I'm like, oh no, I messed that up, but I'm just going to keep going. You're not actually going to see the back of the chair at all once I start creating the scene, so it's no big deal. But you just want to color the seat and the legs and then the top part of that chair, leaving the back chair rails just as they are stamped out. I don't think it looks terrible uh, this way, so it's not a huge deal, and like I said, you won't be able to see it anyways. Decided to color up the door in the same color again just to bring some continuity across the various images. I tend to do that when I'm card making. Uh, I thought about doing pink for the little cafe and then thought better. So I'm just going to have the building itself be white. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend out those uh, cool gray colors with the colorless blender and it just gives it some nice shadows. So we're almost done with the coloring. I brought in some browns here to do the soil and the pot. 
I'm using E25, E23, and E13. And I felt like the soil wasn't dark enough, so I brought in the E27. And I'm going to color the chocolate of the cupcake with the E27 and the E25. Thought I'd do her purse like it was a leather purse. So I colored that up in the browns as well. And here I was still trying to figure out what color I wanted to do the Little Bunny's outfit. Decided on some teals or aquas. So I'm using BG18 as my darkest, BG13 as my darkest midtone, BG11 as my lightest midtone, and then the BG10 as my highlight color. Went ahead and colored the coffee with the E23. And I'm also going to add some of the lighter blue to the windows and also the glass in the lantern and that will bring the blue throughout the card as well. In hindsight, if I knew that I wasn't using the little girl, I probably would have colored the bunny's outfit in pink. But at this point in the coloring, I thought I was going to use all the images. So just finishing up with blending out the blue so that it looks a little bit more like glass and then we can go on to creating the card. I'm using the Mini Edge Cloud stencil here by MFT. I'm going to skip through a lot of this. I've done this type of cloudy background before. So I'm just using peacock feathers and tumbled glass, mostly the tumbled glass, and then I'm going to come in and highlight some of the areas with the peacock feathers, but I'll show you that uh, once I work on the bottom part as well. So for the ground area, I'm doing a mix of green and like a sandy beige color. And for this sandy color, I'm using tea dye. I'm just adding a little bit of ink here just to give this cardstock some added texture. I'm using my makeup brushes here. And what I love about these is you can just go ahead and wipe them with a dry microfiber cloth and move on to your next color. And for the green, I added a little bit of Twisted Citron, and this just brings some brightness to this cardstock. This is just cardstock that I had in my stash. I did cut the brown one out using the, it's like a hillside border from the palm tree border die. And then this one here with the green is from the hillside borders, and both of those are from Lawn Fawn. I went ahead and put the green one onto my cloud panel there to the back and then the brown cardstock to the forefront. I'm going to go ahead and cut this panel out with a stitched rectangle die. Once I get that complete, I will bring in the images and start creating my little scene. I did cut out all the images using my brother's scan and cut, which I absolutely love. I get lots of questions about it. I do link to the one that I use below. I have the, I believe it's the 250 model because I only use it for cutting out stamped images and it's the most affordable of all of the machines available in the scan and cut line. To create the scene, I decided to start with the little cafe and I added this little cup of coffee to the top, almost like it's the sign for the cafe. That little cup is so cute. It has a little rabbit on the front of the cup. It's adorable. So I thought that was kind of cute to put on top of the little sign area on the cafe. I added the light post and the planter to the back of the scene and now I'm just working on the front here where we have our little bunny sitting down having a drink and a cupcake with our little bunny here who's working at the cafe bringing her a piece of candy. So you can see what I was talking about when I said you aren't even going to be able to see the chair. I thought it would be cute to have it look like she was sitting on it just going to add the little piece of candy to our bunny's hand here and then I'm going to have him to the left hand side like he's walking from the cafe over to the table. For the sentiment I am using the words stay brutiful. I did need to trim off the stamp there because I only wanted to use a portion of that. I believe it originally said brutiful day. Um, 
So I trim that off and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. I just want to make sure my stamps are straight. I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to stamp that onto my card panel. I am going to wipe that up with my stamp chamois, which I love, and get my Misty out of the way there. And then I can go ahead and add this card panel to my card base, which is a standard A2 size card at four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can see with the stitched rectangle die that I used, it allows for a white border, which I thought would be nice for this card because there is quite a bit of white. Of course, it wouldn't be me if I didn't get my fingers in that ink. However, it still never deters me from using it. I absolutely love the Nocturne ink. I just have to learn to keep my fingers out of it. So to finish the card off, I'm bringing in my white gel pen to add some highlights. You know I love to do this. It just brings everything to life. And I'm not zoomed in quite enough for you to see the detail, but you can see it in the still shots of the photo. I'm also going to use some of the Doodlebug shape sprinkles. These are the tiny hearts. I wanted to bring a little bit more pink into the card. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one by the sentiment and then two over to the left hand side of the card here just to fill in that gap. I thought about putting one over top of the candy. I dropped this one here, so I just had to pick it up and move it over. Uh, but the heart was too big for the candy, so I'm just going to have them to the side there. So that's the card for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to use coupon code GEN10 to save 10% off your total purchase at Not Too Shabby Shop. Here's a couple more videos if you're interested in checking them out. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Bye.